The point is to keep record of what I'm doing just so I can remember. This is one of those PEX tools and it just takes this copper ring and it smashes it. And I'm going to use that in place of the more traditional hose fixes. I'm going to attempt to. Here, take a look at this up close. These male end nipples for pneumatic hoses, there are two types. There's a female end and a male end. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I'm going to use this one just because I have so many more of them. I try to use brass fittings because they're soft, they're corrosion resistant, they wear the female ends less, all of the in and out, this gets worn out less. It seems they also kind of have a, they kind of break in and I like that. This is what you get factory. And what I'm going to do, the plan is to shove one of these in all the way and then it will be threaded there and allow me to attach another one right to it. So what's going to keep it from shooting off? This PEX sleeve will smash around it like a, like a, a ferrule would normally. And I've stuck a piece of rubber hose on here that's just a little bit proud of the fitting. I would have used an O-ring if I had an O-ring that size. But the idea is that once this ap applies enough pressure to the hose, it will smash this and cause a compression fitting like thing that will hopefully make a rubber bump in there that seals it and prevents it from coming out. This is experimental and I don't, it's probably not practical for most people to do unless you have one of these uh, tools. But let's try it. This is the wrong side, but I'm just using it to get it started because it'll be harder to put the side on that has the rubber o-ring. Idea came about because I'm using PEX to run pneumatic airlines in my shop. There's a fitting there. I'll show you on the back side. This center wall has just been put in. Here we are at the air compressor side. This is where the air goes into the system. And here are one of the fittings where it comes out. A mount, a bushing, an extension to get us out of the wall. And this is a street 90, just to point it in a direction so that this doesn't get knocked off. But the need for a custom sized short hose arose, one that will go to my compressor, or rather from the compressor to energize the system. Okay, I don't know if I'll be able to film this. My rubber hose gasket failed. Here's attempt number three. Oh, that was close. I almost forgot. Put this on first. So by putting it in the vise, I was able to scrunch it all the way up to here. And I think this is going to make a great fit. Because of the way it starts to flare out over the end of the fitting like this. I really think it's going to stop it from ever coming back. The hose that is. Procedural lessons are hard to learn. <laughs> it takes patience. Um, but that's why you can watch this and learn from my mistake. It, you won't be able to make it out but there, the fitting has a sharp burr around the edge and I'm afraid that if I keep pounding it on it's going to cut into the hose and so what I'm doing here is using this this is just a conical 
thing with sandpaper on it and I'm using it to chamfer the inside edge and that will make it slip over easily and wedge itself on hopefully so I'm going to redo this whole thing I don't know if you'll be able to make out that sharp burr around the top edge but this is what one looked like before and this is what my new one looks like Okay, it's been replaced, and now for the next attempt, a little bit of mineral oil for lubrication. I'm trying not to cut this hose. Keep in mind that I'm using a cheap vinyl hose here. As such, it's going to have different properties than rubber wood, especially under heat. That feels exactly as it should, I think. All right, so far so good. Now all I have to do is crimp this and give it some Teflon tape and it's done. The direction you put the tape on matters, and it's confusing. It always confuses me. If you put it on the other way, then as you're threading on the female end, it will knock it off instead of wrapping it on tighter. Think about it if you never have before. This is important to note. This method doesn't leave much here for you to use your wrench to grab a hold of that. So I'm just tightening it this way, which I'm sure will be fine because you don't need to over tighten your fittings in my experience. And so there it is, a custom made vinyl hose. Will it work? I'm sure it will. Should you do it? No. I don't recommend that you do this at all. There are better ways. I'm showing you that you can be a field medic and still get away with stuff. This is 125 PSI. I don't usually use that much pressure. I'm usually a little lower. And this is soap and water. We will be just fine. No offense, but some of you are next level cheapskates, and so am I. But if you were wondering, no, you just you can't just use regular copper plumbing to make your own PEX fasteners because here it is in comparison to half inch, and this is three quarters. The three quarter pipe is pretty close, so you might be able to get it to work, but I wouldn't recommend it. But I will give you a, a tip in case you want to try it with a vise. The hole is about the size as a half inch, a fitting for half inch black iron. So you could cut one of these in half and stick it in the vise and probably get crimps that are effectively the same thing. So this would be a really cheap and easy way to do it for as infrequently as you're likely to repair hoses, this is a really cheap way to do it without buying any fancy tools. Tell me what you think and experiment. One more thing. I have no interest in misleading you. Sometimes videos like this that feature unconventional methods get lots of naysayer comments, but I'd like you to know that if I find out that this doesn't work well over time, I'll be sure to post it in the description or in the commentary, so check there first. Alright, thanks a lot. See ya.